Um, today I'm going to share with you the results of a comparison of intestinal lesions between enterocelluloitis and porcelicelluloitis using a Lasagna intracellular mucosal homogenate cedar pig challenge model. So a little introduction. Enterocelluloitis is a modified live vaccine that has been on the market and protecting for Lasagna intracellulars for 18 years. In September of 2015, a Lasonia intracellularis killed bacterium came onto the market. There had been no comparative um, data to date. The project was initiated as a larger performance study weaned to market. And so this trial commenced in a commercial weaned to finish flow in the Midwestern part of the United States. So again, our primary objective was to compare the efficacy of enterosol ileitis with porcellus ileitis under field conditions. So again, we were looking at the intestinal lesions. Now we did have some secondary objectives where we were looking at the fecal shedding and then the seroconversion. So I know this is a busy slide, so I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, this is just kind of describing our treatment groups and materials and methods. Uh, these pigs, like I said, were part of a larger performance study, and so wean pigs were placed into a 2400 head tunnel ventilated wean to finish barn. The barn was split into two rooms, 84 pins total. We placed 24 pigs per pin. Um, those pins were um, stratified by weight and gender. We had three treatment groups, as you can see, a non-vaccinated control, that was challenged, and Terrasol ileitis vaccinates, and then the Porcellus ileitis vaccinates. Those treatments were randomly assigned to a pin based on a randomized blocking design. We also placed in each of these pins three seer pigs, so they were non-vaccinated, non-treated. As I mentioned, at weaning, that is when we uh, vaccinate with porcellus ileitis, and that is per label, the two mLs IM. Um, and I do have an error, I'm sorry, that we vaccinated with enterosol ileitis at actually five to six weeks post-placement, so total age would have been eight weeks of age. Um, we did a full dose via the drinking water system, and this was just following the, um, uh, the protocol that has already been standardized for that farm. Uh, as I mentioned, the three cedar pigs, we inoculated them with a gut homogenate. Uh, we were targeting a concentration of 10 to the 8th, and we did that at 12 weeks of age. Four weeks later, we need cropsy 30 pigs that were showing clinical signs. Now, these pigs were the indirect challenge pigs in the pens. We selected three pigs per pen. We selected 10 pit, uh, pens per treatment, so a total of 30 pigs. We collected from these pigs um, ileum and cecum samples, and we sent those to Iowa State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. We were looking for the presence and the severity of Lasonia intracellulars that was um, in those samples. Now, the diagnostician at Iowa State was blinded, uh, blinded to all three treatment groups, as was the observers at the barns taking care of the pigs and collecting samples. This is just our trial calendar to give you more of a visual of the um, critical points where we were taking samples. Again, as I mentioned, the uh, trial commenced in November of 2015, and it ended in February of 2016. Uh, with each placement um, of pigs into the barn, we vaccinated with porcellus ileitis, again per label. At five to six weeks post-placement, so eight weeks of age, we vaccinated with enterosol ileitis via the drinking water. Three weeks later, we challenged those three cedar pigs with the 40 mLs of uh, 10 to the 8 gut homogenate. And then four weeks later, that's when we necropsied those three pigs per pin that were indirectly challenged. So going into results. Um, for our serum samples, we, take, we took samples at placement into the barn prior to challenge and then post um, prior to necropsy post-challenge. We used the Sonova Lasonia intracellularis ELISA at the HMC. As you can see, three weeks post-placement um, for the porcellus ileitis vaccinates, we do start to see some seroconversion, but it only reached about 50 to 60% of the pigs. All three groups did seroconvert post-challenge. Again, another busy slide, I apologize, but this is just a summary of the IHC scores. Um, again, the diagnostician that scored these um, samples was blinded to all three treatment groups. Um, you, as you can see on the bottom, there is our scoring rubric that he used. A zero is negative, a one is zero to 25% colonization, 
A two would be 25 to 50% colonization, three, 50 to 75% colonization, and then four was 75% to 100% colonization. As you can see, the Enterosol oleitis group had 93.33% lesion free. That is in contrast to the non-vaccinated control group that was challenged that had a 13.33 and a lesion score severity of four. And that again is a 75 to 100% colonization of that sample. We did investigate the cecum, but as we have found in previous literature and in our own study, um, the cecum is rarely um, colonized, so it's really uncommon to find lesions there. We did take a fecal um, sample from the 30 necropsy pigs, and we submitted for quantitative PCR. Um, we did that at the HMC, and as you can see, the enterosol ileitis group had the lower number of um, PCR positives and also the, the less volume of shedding as well. Again, this slide is just a summary of the previous results. So when we look at the enterosol ileitis group, it is the only treatment group that is significantly different from the non-vaccinated control challenge group in regards to the IHC of the lesion scores. So conclusions, under the um, conditions of this study, we conclude that the IHC scores and histologic lesions were lower for enterosol ileitis compared to the porcillus ileitis group and the non-vaccinated control group. Enterosol ileitis had the lowest percentage of PCR positives and the lower volume of positives as well. IHD um, Lasonia elisa titers are not indicative of protective immunity.